Welcome to Soul Fire Wisdom with Kate Olson. As an evolving spirit and change adventure navigator, it is Kate's mission to empower and guide you on your path and inspire your truest passions. She will encourage you to share your gifts, speak your truth, and ignite your inner wisdom and purpose. She hopes to do so with a little humor and grace and her own soul fire passion. Kate talks with amazing guests who have embraced the pursuit and are fanning the flames of their own passion, purpose, and soul fire wisdom. Now here's your host, Kate. Good afternoon. Welcome to Soul Fire Wisdom and Totally Awesome, Try Something New and Talk About It Tuesday. So if this is your first time listening, I'm a hypnotherapist, an NLP practitioner, a Reiki master, and a life coach. But I like to call myself a change adventure navigator because I love guiding people through obstacles and adversity to find their path, purpose, and peace. So what I tried this week was, um, and I actually didn't have any aches and pains this week, but I did a couple weeks ago. And at that time, I ordered uh, something that I saw on TV. I ordered a calming comfort um, heating pad that's it, it has clay rocks that weighed it down and then are clay stones and then as well as heat it vibrates so it sounded really good on tv so i wanted to try it out <laughs> and i did um i just really didn't find it um it, it the vibration wasn't strong enough to really make a difference and it didn't seem to heat warm enough so i was i have to say i was kind of disappointed and uh you know that's what i tried <laughs> so um yeah some some people um might like it but i actually sent it back so i have a great guest planned for today uh, my guest is uh jenny dawn and jenny is a shamanic practitioner an energy healer and a life coach and she's been practicing for um quite a while, uh, over 15 years, and um, she works with uh, clients um, who are experiencing trauma, clients who want to make big changes, clients who uh, need support, and she uses a combination of modern um, modalities and indigenous um, modalities as well and i'm really interested i've been fascinated with the shamanic um, modalities because that's something i don't have in my background so we can both uh i can learn something while the listeners do too. So I'm just going to introduce Jenny now and we'll find out more about what she does. Hi, Jenny. Hi. How are you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, so yeah. can you just tell us a little bit more about your background and what led you to your current path? Yes, my current path um, was definitely not planned. It wasn't something I saw myself doing. Um, Years ago, um, I was married at the young age of 20, and my husband passed away at the age of 22. Mm -hmm. And that life circumstance 
shifted my course dramatically is mm -hmm. a way of saying it. And I started having experiences that no one talked to me about. It wasn't something that we talked about openly in our household. Um, I started feeling things, sensing things, almost even hearing voices, right? Mm -hmm. To the point where I kind of thought I was going crazy a little bit. <laughs> and come to find out that's not what was happening. It was my intuitive gifts were opening up. Um, and so because my intuitive gifts were opening up, you know, the old saying, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And so teachers started showing up in my life and they just happened to be one teacher. My first um, indigenous teacher, teacher was um, Lakota. He was a Lakota teacher. And so I started learning those medicine ways. And then I also just had an energetic teacher show up in my life. It just started teaching me how to work with energy. Mm. So that's kind of how I came to this work. And then throughout the course of time, I took more training. Um, and then the best training, of course, is hands-on. So um, before that time, did you know that you had um, gifts or talents in that area? I did not. Um, like I said, it wasn't something that was talked about in our household. It wasn't something I had experienced before. Um, I didn't have any friends or curiosity around that. But as the death of my husband occurred, it was like something opened up in me that was new and different. And I started seeking, I started exploring, I started asking questions based on some of the experiences that I was having that at the time were very abnormal for me. Um, all the way up until even, I think it was 2001, I took, um, it was a spiritual trip, but more of spiritual awakening, understanding, and I was in Egypt. Um, this is a good story. I was in Egypt and we were outside one of the temples in Egypt and the facilitator that was guiding the group, and there was a lady outside of part of our group, a lady that was experiencing some back pain. And so she was sitting outside of the temple and the facilitator came up and said, Jenny, put your hands on her back. And I said, what? And she's like, put your hands on her back. And I said, and do what? She's like, just put your hands on her back. And so I did. And 10 minutes later, the lady is like, oh my God, thank you. The pain is gone. I said, I didn't do anything. And the facilitator said, you don't know what it is that you do yet. Hmm. You know, so I had some teachers that saw things in me before I knew mm. and I understood what that was. Yes. So um, the sh shamanic uh, practitioner, what is a shamanic practitioner and what do they do or what do you do? <laughs> I was going to say, I think that's different for everyone. Um, a shamanic practitioner, for me, the understanding of that is one that lives in alignment with the energies of nature. Mm, okay. So we're connected to and studying the directions, the, the plant life, the animal life, storms, like all of that is information in our world. And it's messaging and it's connecting with those spirits with those energies and I when I think about it also we all as individuals right this is our world and so it's connecting and feeling into also an individual on what's going on in their personal environment as well as what's going on in our external environment 
And so for me, what shamanic means is it's the connection of nature, it's studying that, and it's, it's practicing some of the old teachings. When we think about a medicine man, right? Mm. And shaman that would be with a tribe, like they're working with all those natural components of earth. Um, and so, and then, and then I think how an individual works with that is different for each individual because it's about you connecting with that energy and then it becoming your own medicine. Okay. So um, energy healing is something I also do, but I also know that like what you just said, that everyone has different gifts in that area and experiences it differently. So how do you um, experience energy and work with people's energy? Oftentimes when a new client comes to me, um, the clients that come to me are, they're recognizing in their life that they're the common denominator meaning this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working. Wow, I'm the common denominator in all four of those equations, right? Or they're recognizing that they have a pattern and it might be a pattern in a job, it might be a pattern in relationships, but they're recognizing like, wait, I'm in this loop again, this pattern again. And so they're starting to see like, they're at play in their, in their world. So we usually talk a little bit about just what's going on. And then there comes a point of stop talking because our mental mind is definitely different than our emotional body and our spiritual body. And so for me, I can feel into the body, their physical body about, about where energy is getting stuck or where they're holding energy that is kind of maybe interrupting the natural flow of energy. And so at that point, what we do is I, and I don't know how to explain how I feel into it, but I get this sense of, I usually place my hands underneath somebody's body and I can start feeling where things are bogged down. And then I bring their awareness into that and will tend to breathe into that energy. And at that point, they'll usually have an emotional release or a memory will come forward. And it's kind of opening that up and peeling that so we can get that energy moving through that area again. Hmm. Okay. About it. So um, have you ever done Reiki? I haven't done Reiki, but I hear the work that I do is similar, but my training was different. Yes, yes, it is similar. I, um, it, so until that experience in Egypt, did you know you had this ability? No, I had been learning how to play with energy and move energy, but not necessarily work with somebody. Mm -hmm. So one of my teachers, taught me how to feel my own energy, right? I remember late nights in the kitchen, playing with my own energy, playing with her energy, even to the point, like some nights when we really get into that, like being able to move a light crystal on the other side of the room, like really, like she really taught me how to focus and move and sense that energetic piece. Um, and play, like play with it. Cause we all can feel our own energy if we bring our awareness and attention and intention into it. It's a practice, it's developed. We all have it. Um, there were just a lot of late nights in the kitchen playing and developing that and really waking up the chakra centers in the palms of my hand. Um, so I had done that, but I hadn't worked with another mm, okay so i was just curious because i um had 
was aware of this ability since I was a child, but I didn't know what it was, like especially with animals. I, I could, there was, you know, like this power I seemed to have that I didn't know where it came from and what to do with it. So um, I didn't understand what it was that I was doing until I um, started working with it when I went to my coach training. Yep. But, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, I think, the doorway that opened for me when my husband died. Mm. Right. Okay. It was a door. It, it felt like a doorway that opened or a, you know, when you go to a play and they lift the curtain, that was the experience I had when he died. And so it was like, wait, what just happened? So trauma is one of the areas that you uh, work with. So how does trauma show up in the body? So a lot of the work that I do is childhood trauma. Um, and I work a lot with the inner child. Mm -hmm. And trauma shows up just like we already spoke. It shows up in patterns. It shows up in beliefs. It shows up in kind of these held structures. Mm -hmm. um, in the body, it can even be a rigidness. It can be a block. It can be a closed. Um, oftentimes, when I think about how to best explain sometimes how energy gets blocked in the body is, you know, when you've, have you ever cleaned out your kitchen sink or your bathroom sink and you take the pipe off and it's all clogged and there's this residue around the end. And so oftentimes in the body and the energy centers, when trauma is there, it starts building up a residue in the body, it starts building up blocks. And so then less energy can get through, very similar to a clogged drain. And so opening up that energy, clearing away that block. And often that means with childhood trauma, we sometimes have to go back into that memory. We have to go back into that moment so that the physical body can release the trauma that was held that it couldn't release at that time. Okay, so how does energy show up for you in the body when you're working with clients? So it's, it's that denseness. It's that, um, like I just I kind of said, in a moment it's like you you feel in and you bump up against something there's not a fluidity there's not a flow so it's like what's this like it can feel even hard and crystallized mm -hmm. in the body versus everything moving so that's often what it is and if you feel into it and at the same time, ask the client, can you feel or sense this? They'll normally say, yes, there's knots in my stomach or my throat is sore or my heart feels closed right now. It's very heavy. So they also have awareness of it when you touch it, so to speak. Mm hmm. OK, so what do you like most about um what you do is there you know something specific that you enjoy or a type of client you like working with i think the best part about working about doing this work is that i get to witness people reclaiming themselves mm, yeah right they're and empowering them to do it you know, it's, it's very humbling to hold a container for somebody's healing and to witness them step into that, the vulnerability it takes, the courage it takes to go there. Um, that's the best part. Like, ultimately, at the end of the day, I don't heal anybody. 
they heal themselves. Right. Yes. Right. So I just facilitate, I guide, I hold the container, but the client has to do the work. And it's a privilege to witness that and to be present for that. And that's, that's the joy out of what I get to do, even in the ugliest moments or the roughest, right? That's, that's the joy. Yes, definitely. So what are some of the um, indigenous uh, practices or modalities that, that you use or work with? You know, one of the oldest tools um, that I was taught is working with a rattle. Um, a rattle is actually the first thing that we give a child, right? It's one of their first toys, they shake it. The indigenous teachings around a rattle is a rattle can call, we can call ourselves home with the rattle, hmm. right? And so I always, it's interesting that that's the first thing we give a baby is a rattle. Mm -hmm. Working with a rattle is very powerful because it has a way of breaking up stagnant energy in the body and helping one clear it out. So I work with rattles, I work with feathers. Um, and so the tools to help, and, and when you work with a tool, when you work with a feather, so to speak, or a wing, you can pull in the energy of that spirit animal. Mm -hmm. Also help clear the energetics in that body to help facilitate that stuck and breaking apart, right? Because they can come in, that spirit animal, the energy of that animal can come in on that tool and help facilitate that. And that's to me, that's, that's working with shamanic teachings is to mm -hmm. be able to access that energetic realm and to be able to be in relationship with those spirit allies. So some of the greatest tools is, for me is the rattle and the feather. And those are both indigenous teachings and both shamanic teachings. And like, I don't go too many places without my rattle. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So how big a part um, is our rituals in your, in the work that you do? It's everything. Uh, rituals are everything. Um, there's, you know, at the beginning of every session is a ritual and the, be the end of every session is a ritual. What happens in between is up to the client but you open a container the same way and you close the container the same way. And that's the honoring of the energy. That's the honoring of the allies that I work with, but everything's a ritual. Um, that's how I know what it is that I'm doing. And that's how the spirit allies also know what it is that I'm doing because there's certain teachings around that just that piece like do it you do it this way and you do it this way that way it's consistent and there's layers of then safety and protection that are built into those rituals you know yes. so what do you, everything how how do you think that affects um i guess the client relationship i think it creates a uh, a container of safety, right? Um, most people who come to me, they know they're coming to me. You know, they're, they, they've, they've been referred, so they have an idea of how I work. They know it's not, they know it's alternative medicine. <laughs> um, so they know it might look a little different than where they've gone before. Um, and that's okay, right? Because sometimes the reason people come to me is because what they've done before hasn't worked for them. So they're doing something different now. So for me, I think it opens that container of safety, you know, like 
I can't compromise or do my work different because you don't, you're uncomfortable with it. That, no, that just means I'm not your person. And let's find you your right person because I'm going to do my work the way I do my work. Okay. Yeah. So how um, quickly is somebody able to move through trauma or a block uh, with the methods that you use in general? I know everyone's different, but. Yeah. It is. It's different every time. It, it depends on the depth of the trauma. It de depends on um, the layering that has occurred since that trauma. It depends on how much work they have done before they've come to me. Um, it depends on fight and flight response and protective responses in the body because um, all of those are addressed first before we can even do healing. So someone who's done a lot of work, has been open to energetic work, is practicing awareness in their life, knows kind of what their traumas are, we could probably move through things in a handful of sessions to clear it completely out. Someone who hasn't, or if the trauma is pretty deep and layered, they might be with me for a while. Um, because healing also happens in layers and it doesn't happen overnight. You know, right. it's, yes. it's a continued process. Um, especially if it's going to be lasting. Yeah. Cause we're, we're, we're so multifaceted. We are so multifaceted. Very true. So, um, I have a question that's kind of unrelated to, um, the work that you do, but I've been asking all of my, uh, guests lately. And that is, um, what has surprised you most about life so far? That you don't always have to have a plan. Um, staying open, staying aware, and seeing where life will take you. Um, in my experience, has often been grander than any plan I could put together. Yeah. And so I think mm -hmm. that's the biggest, to stay open, you know, if, if we can, if I can stay open to the possibilities, possibilities present themselves tenfold. So I think that's the biggest surprise is learning how to stay open because life is always got my back. The universe has always got my best interest in mind. Hmm. Just being open to it. Okay. Um, so if you could leave the listeners with uh, one thought from today's show, what would you want that to be? I think most importantly that they're in charge and in control of their path. And if it's not working, you can change it. You can change it, you know, and it might mean digging in a little bit. It might mean, you know, looking at some things that you haven't thought of for years or kind of unfolding, unpacking some things that you've tucked way away and going, okay, let me pull this out. Let me look at this. Like, because the more you clear, the more space there is for you. Yes, the more, definitely. Right. So I think it's empowering to know that we are all in control of our own healing and that journey for us. And some don't want to do it and that that's okay that's their prerogative and that's their choice but if you are unhappy and you know there's more for you dive in face it head on you will not be disappointed yes that's a, a lot of people those things that seem like they're either like a little bit scary or a little bit hard 
they kind of push under the rug and those yes. those are the things that you run into later <laughs> yes and you gotta come you gotta deal with them they'll keep tripping yeah. you otherwise <laughs> yep so um if somebody is interested in finding out um more about this and um you know how can they get more information and how can they contact you they can find me on my website and it's jennydon.com um you can also find me on instagram and that's light by dawn and on my website i have a let's connect so it's a 15 minute free call you can schedule that at any time and we can just talk and see if this is a fit for you because sometimes it's not and sometimes it is but often i know for me even when i'm going to see somebody new i'd like to connect with them first and just see if our energy aligns if this feels in my ballpark of what i want to do and so i always have that available so that we can connect okay yeah. and um Don is D A H N. Correct. So. And the first name is spelled differently as well. It's J E N I. Um, so you can find me like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and if, if you don't remember that, um, on on the radio website, uh soulfireradio.com, uh, click on guests and scroll down to uh, Jenny's photo and then her website link is is there so that's how you can get in touch with her and you know see if you would like to find out more about um, the modalities that she works with lovely yes so thank you so much for uh, being here today and talking about this. It, it is uh, pretty fascinating, all the different uh, healing modalities that there are out there. There and, are, thank you for having me. And, and it's all about just finding what works for you, finding your modality, that's the most important thing. Yes, that and, uh, you know, I love that you use some of the more modern modalities and then you draw on, you know, the indigenous um, and aligning with, with nature. Yeah, yeah. So, so thank you. Yes, thank you for having me, Kate. We have another great show planned for next week. Next week, my guest will be uh, Rocky Singh Candola. And um, Rocky has had a very rocky life experience. Um, it has, I mean, he's experienced, um, trying to be murdered or, or people trying to murder him. Um, he had a face injury where his face had to be reconstructed. He's a convicted felon, um, which actually started in childhood with being in different uh, reform camps. And now he is a successful entrepreneur and, um, you know, actually feels happy and joyful. So he's had uh, quite a journey. You know that saying, um, hurt people hurt people. Well, he's gone through that experience and now he one of his passions is helping other people to um, navigate that journey from having a background like his to getting to the other side, which isn't always easy. So tune in next Tuesday, 3 p.m. 
and that specific time. And uh, we'll find out more about, you know, the details of his story. So I'm just going to say bye for now. And thank you again, Jenny. Thank you for listening to Soul Fire Wisdom with Kay Olson. We hope you enjoyed the show. If we made you laugh, brightened your day, or sparked a new thought, we have succeeded in our mission. Join us next time when we'll share more secrets and truths and all the magic of transformation that is the journey to Soul Fire Wisdom. Always remember, be fierce in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. Thank you.